This is Christ Living Spring Apostolic Ministry Club, where the power of God works miracles through the hands of the anointed man of God, Pastor Wale Oladin, the senior pastor, as he ministers salvation, deliverance, and healing. Prayers, they say, is the master key, but you must pray with understanding through the word of God and the reality of your new creation to defeat the enemies of your soul. Your life will not remain the same as you listen to this life-changing message. Thank you and remain blessed. It was terrific. If you don't mind, can we praise the Lord again? Eh? Are you ready? Okay, sit for one minute. If you have water, drink. How was your night? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you know that I cherish you so much. You are doing well. And you are imbibing the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ on this mountain. I'm preparing everybody to make heaven at the end of the day. We will not miss it in Jesus' name. Thank the Lord for the Sunday school director. Thank God for the teacher this morning. To God be the glory. The word of the Lord will not be scarce on this altar. I want to just bless the Lord because this is our month of thanksgiving. Let's just thank God. Next week, by the grace of the Lord, on Sunday, we're going to come in our best at our, is our Sunday, is our annual thanksgiving. What we're going to do is to dance all through unto the Lord. And please make sure you come with gifts to bless the name of the Lord. Are you ready now? Now, shall we rise up now? I want songs in different languages. Let's just dance unto the Lord. I see what God is going to Lord, do. Lord, you are so good. Blessed be your name. Lord, Lord you, you are, are so good. good. Oh, yeah. Blessed be your name. And heaven, and you are the Lord. Excuse me, I want to dance for my God.
now to him be all the glory and adoration in Jesus name um, Psalm 69 verse 30 has been given unto us as a watchword for the month I will praise the name of the Lord with his song we have been singing song sings and we magnify him with thanksgiving I pray for you I pray for myself I pray for our families those watching online all over the world that this very month God will make you to sing a new song Amen. in the name of Jesus well, I congratulate those who shouted amen. In the name of Jesus, you will still ce celebrate this month. Amen. You will still celebrate this month. Amen. Anointing for thanksgiving. Let it rest upon that person with the loudest amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Your heavens of thanksgiving will open. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank the Lord for what God did last week in our prayer, Clam Prayer Academy UK VG. It was wonderful. From this altar, six ministers went with me. Uh, Pastor Peace Akin Musoye took the first session on victory over limitations. It was wow. Jesus manifested his glory. We had an interlude, and Pastor uh, Evangelist Peter Oluwole came up. Victory over strange dreams. It was wow. Fire for fire. Come and see what God was doing very marvelous. To God be the glory. The choir, they are fantastic people. And Shego Marubojo came up and the final session was wonderful. Inside that cold, two degrees centigrade, people were sweating and they were receiving from the Lord. To God be the glory in Jesus' name. We had a very powerful anointing service in our clam prayer center, Lekki, on Thursday. I want to seize this opportunity to appreciate my son and my daughter, Pastor and Pastor Mrs. Kola De Akintunde. They are doing well there and they are firmly in control of what they are doing. I bless God for their lives. May the Lord bless you all in Jesus' name. This morning, the Lord wants me to tell someone that as he lives, he will not deny you what he has promised you. Amen. And that person should lay hold on Psalm 33, verse 9. Psalm 33, verse 9. I see many marriages next year. Amen. See many people buying houses, Amen. building mansions, Amen. starting new ministries. Amen. I see children doing well in their schools. Amen. I see many establishments, Amen. many industrialists, Amen. many farmers. Amen. You know, people are just doing well Amen. to the glory of God. Psalm 33 verse 9 says, For he spoke, and it was done. Has God failed? My God will never fail. Has God failed? My God will never, 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 never fail. He's the same yesterday, today and forever. Has God failed? My God will never fail. For he spoke and it was done. He commanded and he stood fast. That which the Lord has spoken to you on that matter, no matter what you are passing through, everyone who says amen, that it shall be done in the name of Jesus. Amen. Before I prophesy, I have taught you and I will keep teaching you. 
You know, by the grace of God, God uses me in the office of the prophet and evangelist and as an apostle, the grand breaker. But I have discovered that no matter the extent of the revelation given, dreams shown, trance that we see, the best prophecy is the scriptural prophecy. When you take the word, you send it forth. That is a scriptural prophecy. It does not miss the target. It, you may not catch it immediately, but bank it, it's going to work because the word of the Lord will not fall to the ground. So when there is a scriptural prophecy, you, you hold it more than anybody. Keep it there, it's going to work. That which the Lord has spoken according to that word shall be done in the name of Jesus. Amen. That which he has commanded shall stand first in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Be seated. There is someone here, the Lord is saying that I should pray for you to receive an unusual grace of the Almighty God to achieve that purpose before the close of this year. Amen. If you are that person, receive that unusual grace. Amen. Receive that unusual grace. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And the Lord said to me, pray against electrocution. Pray against fire accident. Pray against mistakes and errors that can lead to tragedy. Pity we, there was this um, havoc in a quiet bomb yesterday in New York. A bishop was being consecrated. And the governor of the state was there. Midway, the roof of the church gave way. Over 50 people died immediately. See how people were turned into pieces. This time yesterday, they were still alive. They went to church. Before I pray, I want to appeal to Christian leaders. There are some prayers Holy Spirit will never answer. There are some prayers Jesus will never answer. There are some prayers God himself will never answer if you are careless. I am a trained building engineer. I practiced engineering for 20 years of my life. I know the work by the grace of God. That is why what you see in this environment, because I'm a fellow, I make sure that everything is done according to engineering precision. When you say you are a general overseer, instead of having 24 blocks from a mix, you want 80 blocks, and you are saying you are asking God to support it. God will never support it. That is stupidity. Are you hearing me? When a, a bricklayer, an artisan will tell you, oh God, don't worry. Ah, Gio, no worry. I don't do it. When they do it for Coca-Cola for 4018, during the time of Lugar, that was there. Look, I go where them, I go stand, Baba. And you agree. You are a stupid old general of Asia. Your gumption is to be used. Your brain is to be used. Get professionals to handle professional things. Pennywise, pan foolish. Those people, a, a lady from the university, quickly left the university to be a nurse yesterday. She was torn to pieces because of carelessness. So in the body of Christ, the areas where we are not grazed, let's call those who are grazed. If you are to invite an engineer, a building engineer, civil engineer, a quantity surveyor, mechanical, electrical, please invite them, pay. When you don't have money, keep the money. When you have it, invite them. Pray their professional fees. They won't deceive you. So in the body of Christ, we must do things right. That is when we can pray and God will answer us. I am not saying that was the reason there, but I'm just admonishing so that we won't have a repeated occurrence. And this morning, I pray for the church in New York that the Lord will comfort them Amen. and help them again. Amen. And those bereaved families, the Lord will succor them in Jesus' name Amen. and grant them solace in the name of Jesus. But let's quickly take insurance against electrocution. The remaining days this year must be properly insured in the Lord. Proverbs 18.10 says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Everyone say after me, The name of the Lord. The name of the Lord. If you don't say the scripture after me, that means you don't love yourself, you don't love your family members. Say the name of the Lord. It's a strong tower. I and my family members, we run into it and we are saved in the name of Jesus. Say the name of the Lord. 
is a strong tower. We run into it and we are saved in the name of Jesus. Psalm 118 verse 17. Psalm 118 verse 17. Quickly. Wow. This time is fast. Now, say we instead of I because of all those who are connected with you. Say we shall not die. Shall not die. But live. To declare the works of the Lord in the land of the living in the name of Jesus. Again, say louder than ever, we shall not die, but live to declare the works of the Lord in the land of the living. We got our song, we shall not die, but live to praise the Lord from that place. As we are seated, point to someone by your right. Are your left. We shall not die, but live to praise the Lord. We shall not die, but live to praise the Lord. We shall not die, but live to praise the Lord. We shall not die, but live to Look praise at the eyes. Lord. You will not die, but live to praise the Lord. You shall not die, but live to praise the Lord. You will not die, but live to praise the Lord. You will not die, but live to praise the Lord. Thank you, John. Now let you point to me here. They no point to me, so I stop the song. I would have now. You will not die, but live to praise the Lord. You will not die, but live to praise the Lord. You will not die, but live to praise the Lord. You will not die, but say it very well, say it very well. You will not die, but live to praise the Lord. You will not die, but live to praise the Lord. The third scriptural insurance is John ten. Verses 28, 29, and 30. Please don't joke with these scriptures. Job chapter 10, verses 28, 29, and 30. John, 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 thank you. John 10. Say after me. God has given unto me and my family eternal life. If you know you have eternal life, if you know you believe in eternal life, you believe in the finished work of Calvary. You believe in the reality of the new creation. You will say it more than anybody. God has given unto me and my family eternal life. Then you will raise up your voice now. And we shall never perish. In the name of Jesus. Neither shall any man. Neither shall any accident. Block us out of the hands of God. Look at what Jesus said in verse 29. He said, my father who has given you to me is greater than all cases. And no man is able to pluck you out of my father's hands. I and my father are one. Raise up your right hand where you are saying, God has given unto me and my family eternal life. And so we shall never perish. In the name of Jesus. Say we reject electrocution. In the name of Jesus. We reject fire accident. In the name of Jesus. We reject domestic accident. In the name of Jesus. We reject road accident. Water accident. Air accident. In the name of Jesus. We reject mistakes and errors. That can lead to tragedies. In the name of Jesus. Say we are covered. With the blood of Jesus. In the name of God the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Say a big amen. amen. Thank you, beloved. In addition to what we have heard in the Sunday school, I've come this morning to just admonish everybody. Listen to this very carefully. We have a few days to enter into the new year. Yes or no? The Lord wants me to admonish you and encourage you. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1, quickly. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. I want the choir to sit down, please. I'm listening very attentively. We are foreseen, we are all encompassed with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. We have a race to run, listen, beloved. We are here for a purpose. 
Every human being is created for a purpose and with a purpose. It is a disaster of a lifetime if you come to this world without fulfilling that purpose. It is a spiritual anathema, a war, and a spiritual aberration for one to come to this world without fulfilling purpose. As a matter of fact, you don't fulfill purpose if you don't discover it. You can only discover for purpose through the fiat of the Holy Spirit. For the Holy Spirit to reveal to you why you are here. Very many people are doing what they have not been configured from heaven to do. Very many parents have pushed their children into wrong careers. That you are a lawyer does not mean any of your children should be a lawyer. Your children have their lives, please let them be. Don't impose your own profession on them. They have come differently and they are going to manifest differently. I want to beg parents not to, you know, impose courses on our children. I have a friend who is a medical doctor, but she doesn't like medicine. As she said, she loves to do um, all these th things that have to do with fashion. I know of a pharmacist who obtained uh, the master's degree in pharmacy because of her parents. But she prospered through selling bowls, plastics in Idumota. So, let everyone bring forth the seed planted in him or her, in your family. Don't force anyone. Concerning you, God is saying that some weights that are not making you to run the race of life, some sins, whether secret sin, whether presumptuous sins, you must drop them. Meaning that these weights and sins must not go with you into this coming year. That is what Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 is saying. When you carry a lot of loads, you won't be able to run the race of life. Anyone running 100 meters must train to be fit, yes or no? Before, if the, your weight is too much, they ask you to share that weight so that you can run. The same thing, if you are encumbered with so many things, worries of life, things that you should not be yoked with, you are yoked with them, you won't be able to run the race of life. God wants me to encourage you this morning to drop them. Where you can't drop them, you need counsel. Where you need counsel, you go for counsel. Where you need deliverance, you go for deliverance. Where you need both counseling and deliverance, do them so that you can move forward. I pray that any weight that is warming up to attach itself to us in order to enter the new year and let the new year be like other years. Today with a very loud amen, let the Lord cut it off in the name of Jesus. Amen. Can I hear a louder amen to that? Amen. Now hear this, my beloved. I want everyone to examine his or her life. I want you to take stock. What you are going to do after this meeting is to go and get a new diary or a book. Write down many things about yourselves. Make sure you are hard on yourself. Because if you are not hard on yourself, you will not be able to be, to be able to assess yourself. Am I making progress? No, what you should ask yourself. The last five years, have I been making progress? Am I doing otherwise? Am I still on the same level for the past five, seven years? The level must change. There is a difference between moving forward and upward. I've told you several, and I'm going to demonstrate it again. If this man by the right of this altar son, look at me here. Okay, doctor, stand up there. Stand there. All right? Pastor Owo, now stand by Captain Ojomo there. All right. 2012, you follow the instruction. You go this way. He goes this way, okay? Tw between, okay, December 2012, to 2013, this, um, 2012 December to 2013 November, one year. All right? 12 months. By calculation, that's 12 months. I want my mathematics. Are you talking? All right, move forward. Take five steps, move forward. Okay, that's all right, stop. 
Have they moved forward? Yes. 2013 to 2014, move forward three steps. Have they moved forward? All right. 2014 to 2015, one step, move forward. 2015 to 2016, move forward, one step. Now it takes three steps now. 2016 to 2017, move forward. Stop. They have moved forward, but one has moved upward. This man is making progress, but on the same level. But the levels have changed for him. So there is a difference between moving forward and moving upward. Everyone under the Son of God through me, you will move forward and upward. In the name of Jesus. All right, sit down. Doctor, oh yeah, stay here. So that because <laughs> this picture, heaven is coming, you yeah, move forward. Oh yeah, move forward. Oh yeah, move forward. Oh yeah, move forward. Somebody shout hallelujah. So levels have changed. I decree for everyone. In the name of Jesus, as we are moving to the new year, your levels will change. Your levels will change. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Say it louder than your number. I will move forward. I will move forward. And go upward. And go upward. In the name of Jesus. Name. Amen. Go and bring that t-shirt. Move, moving forward. Bring two. I want to dash them. Oh yeah. Sit down. So, beloved, as your pastor, I don't want you to move forward to next year alone. I want you to move forward and upward. Those of you watching online, you have to move forward. And so that when you say, I am moving forward, hallelujah, amen, in the name of Jesus. See my hand, yo. See my hand. See me. I am going upward. Amen. Be seated. You can see my demeanor. Moving forward. See my hand. Moving upward. Going upward. See. Are you ready to sing it now? I am moving forward. See going upward now. No, I am going upward. Oh, Jack, it's okay. With your family members. your seat. I met a man in England last week. They said he had cancer. I ministered to him. That first day, he was extremely very weak. By the time I saw him, he was wearing our t-shirt, moving forward and upward. He said he wore the t-shirt and slept for hours. And then energy came. The pastor, cancer has disappeared. The prophetic garment on this mountain. Any strained ailment in your body shall disappear in the name of Jesus. Amen. So don't be inside the water and be thirsty. If you have not gotten yours, get yours now. Now, let's go on. Are you on the same level? You think you are making progress? But you are not moving upward. God is saying, mba, mba, mba. you have to go upward. I move upward. Don't be satisfied with little success. You start with little success, yes, thank God for that. But as long as you have your breath, you go to the next one. You keep walking, don't retire yourself. You must drop, I have arrived attitude. Is a wrong language in the school of the achievers. If you say, I've arrived, you have not arrived. Where you get to is the beginning for another person. Am I talking? You are going on the road of life. You want to enter the new year, you are seeing a bend. That bend is not the end of the journey. You still have many ground to cover. Anointing to progress globally. 
I just want five people to say amen to this. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Receive it. Amen. Receive it. Amen. Receive it. Amen. Receive it. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I see God multiplying your achievement. Amen. Be seated. Let, then you ask yourself some questions. You have it here. Yeah? Open it. Do you like your present state? Your present state, do you like it? Moving forward and upward. Get it. I speak prophetically. Get more than what you have gotten and see what will happen. Let those two come. Doctor come. Pastor come. Amen. You are moving forward and upward. Doctor, you'll be announced globally. Even both of you shall be walk. That's we were brought up in CAC. What be what? What am I going to do? What your word did? Next one. Do you like your present position? Write it down. No, no. Just do this thing for me, please. And for yourself. Are you proud of yourself now? These are the questions to ask yourself. Are you proud of yourself? When you look at yourself in the mirror, do you like the person you are looking at? I'm not talking of the Mary Kay on your eyes, on your face. Oh, oh Sean Mary Kay, Moju, to Mamba, to Bad Dalet, to Bad Way Off, to Bad Water, and Mba, 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 Mba. Eh, in case she would have died, you buy low. Oh, we're on a quick pass, so me there, Jilay Law. Some people, they look wonderful outside, but they are hemorrhaging. Assess yourself candidly. Be hard on yourself. Pumel yourself so that God can take you out from that place. If you don't help yourself in dealing with yourself, Holy Spirit will not deal with you. Another question. Are you happy with your lifestyle and your conditions? Or lifestyles and your conditions? Do your lifestyles now and your conditions Pave way for progress. Do you want to enter the new year with the present lifestyles and conditions? Then ask yourself this question Am I a blessing to myself? Am I a blessing to my family? Nuclear and extended? Am I a blessing to my environment? Am I a blessing to my generation? Then you can ask yourself, am I a burden to myself? Am I a burden to my people? Do I depend on people to survive? Huh? 35 years old, 40 years old, 45, you are still depending on your parents to survive? Mba, mba, mba. Suppose they are not alive. My father died when I was 11. I was on the street. But I chose to make it. By the grace of God, I clinged on to God tenaciously and he helped me. Do as if you don't have parents. But you have God. One with God is a majority. Are you a concern to people? Do people pity you? Do you want them to continue to pity you this coming year? Say no, no, no. Are you aware that you are more than this? You are more than this. I wrote in this book, My Jericho World Must Fall, day seven. Your present situation is is not your final position. So why do you want to carry that your, situ your, your present situation into the new year? When you know it does not reflect your final position, where God wants you to be, where destiny wants you to be, where purpose wants you to be, where glory wants you to be, where your own creator, your creation wants you to be. Your present situation is not your final position. There is a greater ground out there for you to cover. 
this 2017 we are entering. God will take you to that place in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Put your hand on your chest. Say, I have a future. A glorious future. A better future. Now, with that hand on your chest, say, anointing for better life. Ladies and gentlemen, say it very well now. Anointing for a better life. Flow into my life. Flow into my life. And my family. In the name of Jesus. Say amen. amen. Sit down and say better life. Better. Befriend my glory. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Do you know that you have the capacity, one, to cover more areas in life this coming year? Do you know that you have the capability to break new ground this coming year? These are the things you need to write down. Do you know that you have the capability, the enablement ordained of God? You have been imbued with that enablement. I M B U E D. Imbued. That means God has put something. He has planted something inside of you. He has fashioned something inside of you. He has inculcated something inside of you. He has crafted and nomenclature something inside of you to cover better ground. Number four. Do you know you have the capability and capacity to blaze new trails so that they call you a trailblazer? Do you know you have the innate latent capacity L-A-T-E-N-T -E to set a new pace next year, this coming year you can set a new pace in that field, in other fields, in other areas you have never thought of do you know that God has given you the Holy Spirit inside of you as a counselor, as a comforter, as an advocate, as a strengthener, as a helper, as an intercessor, as a teacher for you to start something new it's not sufficient to pray. Ah, I enter into a new season without doing this shakur. Oh, Lord, bless the work of my hand. You don't have any work. God doesn't answer such prayers. The first prayer is that, Lord, create works for me. Give me a dare for one thing. Then when you have it, you pray on it. Do you know that you have the capability through the agency of the Holy Spirit to start something new? Today! Today! The founder of KFC was retired at 60. At 60, while he was in the garden, he said he perceived that something inside of him had not been tapped. Holy Spirit said, take the little money that is researching in America, buy bread and chicken, stay by the roadside and begin to sell bread and chicken. That was how he started and KFC started at the age of 62. The man lifted 90. After the Babylonian system has retired him. So God can start with you at 70. He can start at 60. He can start at 40. He can start at any time. Get ready. And when the Holy Spirit speaks, don't disobey. People will be giving you suggestions. But these are instructions for men, not God. Psalm 32 verse 8. I will instruct you and guide you with my hands and teach you in the ways that you must go. Someone, somewhere, I don't know where you are. As you are preparing for the new year, the Lord will instruct you in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord will guide you in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord will teach you in the name of Jesus. Amen. The ways that you must go. Isaiah 54, verses 2, 3, and 4. Shall we read together, ladies and gentlemen? I'm going somewhere. Enlarge. Once you say it, it's going to happen to you. Shall we start again? Can we start again? Listen, listen, listen. <clears throat> enlarge the place of your tent. Who will enlarge it? It's you. Who will enlarge it? That is a canopy. We have an event. That's a canopy. Everybody look at me now. That is a rope from the top. We put the rope on the ground. It's tied. It's, that is a stake. So that when wind blows, it will not blow it off. Yes or no? Okay. 
The tent is here. May the Lord bless this cameraman. So focus me that day. Now look at where the stake is. I want to enlarge my tent to this place. So who will remove that stake? It's me. Then who will now lengthen the cord? It's me. Who will put it in the new place? It's me. But Holy Spirit is helping me. So, there is an enlargement. If I have compromised enlargement, spare not mean, means don't compromise. You must put in everything. You must be resilient. You must be unbreakable. I will still be here. So, enlarge the place of your tent this coming year. Put the scripture back now. Enlarge the place of your tent. It's you who must do it too. Then, stretch forth the curtain of your habitation. Don't spare. Spare not. That means don't be lazy. Don't spend any how. When they are discouraged, you don't be discouraged. Be resilient. Exhibit obstinate persistency. You must be stubborn in your pursuit that you can get it there. You are digging. They say, you are digging. You ain't get no water here. You tell them, brother, I'm going to get oil here and go, man. I want to go to the if they are saying, you don't get what I say, no, now nah, oh, yeah, I go get it here and gold. I go they dig. They say, how about you have been digging? They say, no, put it back. Spare not. Don't be discouraged. When they are saying negative things, you be saying the positive. By my God, I'm going to get to gold. I'm going to get to water. I'm going to get to oil. Lengthen your cord and strengthen your stake. This next year, don't stay where you were before. Go to another place. Verse, the next verse. You will now break forth on the right hand to the left. Your seed will inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate city to be inhabited. Look at verse 4. Fear not. This is where the episcopal comes in. For thou shalt not be ashamed. Can I hear a big amen today? I shall not be ashamed, my Lord. Remember your covenant with me. I shall not be ashamed, my Lord. Remember your covenant with me. I shall not be ashamed, my Lord. Fear no, for thou shalt not be ashamed, neither be thou confounded. For thou shalt not be put to shame on that matter. As you are making that effort to go into a new place, to enlarge the place of your tent, to do something new. For you will forget the shame of your youth. And you will not remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore. The grace for enlargement this coming year. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Sit down. Do you know that age is weighing on you on daily basis? Whether you dye your head every day, you can't dye your internal organs. That place you climb before. Because of the wear and tear. No amount of America can go inside. Age is when your children, they are taller than you. That means you are aging. But it's good to age gracefully. When you are achieving your purpose, there will be happiness from inside without eating. You'll be glowing. You'll be shining. Because you are fulfilling purpose. But when you are not fulfilling purpose, eat the whole food in this whole world. It will store on your head. Nothing will happen. I pray. That you will not age without achievement. Amen. Oh my show. In the name of Jesus, you will age with corresponding achievement. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Sit down. Do you know that that time waits for no man? Do you know that God has created you to fulfill purpose? Do you know that you will account for how you spent? Your talents when you get to eternity. Luke 19, 13. Luke 19, 13. And the man was embarking on a journey and he gave his disciples talent and he said, Occupy till I come. God is saying to you that is a peculiar position you are to occupy in life that no other person can occupy it. One. Two. There is a uniqueness in you. No other person has it in the world. Whether white, whether black, whether Caucasian, whether mulatto, no other person has it. No two of you. You are just peculiar. 
The person talking to you, Wale you, it's not the person you are seeing, it's my inner man. We are not, no two of us in the whole world. You are just too wonderful. Beautifully created, no counterfeit of you. What you carry, no other person carries it. God wants you to occupy the body of Christ. You must wake up, occupy in fashion, in a Greek, in carpentry, in trading, in music, in teaching ministry, in healing ministry. We are to occupy in all areas, in governance. We are to be there. In SSS, we are to be there. In security, immigration, we must be there. Go to England today, go and see the Asians. They flooded the immigration of UK. They know what they are doing. Check the settlement of the Jews. They have this thing. God has given, and they bank on the covenant. When they are in the, one, one June is an, an area, he ensures other Jews will come in, and they buy all the properties they are chasing everybody away. They may not be many in terms of numerical strength, but God has given them inner wisdom. In Nigeria, as we are here, when any Jew enters the country, he registers. When a Jew gives birth to a baby, all the Jews in Nigeria will donate one one dollar to that baby. They will put it in an account. When another Jew gives birth to a baby, they donate one one dollar. They put it in that account. Now all the all the children given birth to in that year, you can imagine the thousands and millions of dollars. They will put this in an escrow account, and they will now buy properties for them until they are eighteen, and they must continue the same thing. That's how they multiply. But we don't leverage on that because there is no koinonia among us. There's a limit to what individualism can do. And that's why I love the Igbos. They are the Nigerian Jews. Very zealous. I'm talking of those doing good works. Very zealous. They say you can't get water here. I say I will crack this rock and I will get water. You must have that determination. And know how to invest. A Nimbo man can wear one jean trouser for seven years. He knows what he's doing. My father had two of them working for him in, my, in our house. One of them called Oga John. We always make his hair like that of a woman. You see, what is the why is why are you why plating your hair? Is it plating or plating? Pick the one you like. You know what I'm talking about. Because I don't know the correct pronunciation. You know, I'm a honest pastor, I will tell you. So to year by what do you know? Okay. When this man was about leaving my father, he went to that people making shampoo. He blew his ears. Then he had bought enough material to set up a photography shop. And he said to my father, Pass Samuel, thank you, sir. You see that my hair, where are they? Now my salary are they put there. I they sleep with them, they wake with them. So I don't take them, go, the money go order now. So anybody where go, Take the money, go cut off my hair. But now one cloth in the use over the years. You, you don't have anything. You are, you are buying clothes in your wardrobe. Your clothes are not investment. Go and sell them in the market and start something. Start table tennis, ping pong. The money make there, be doing shishin by the side. Then be selling oil to people selling or uh, going to Okada. That's business model. And then, you know, I've set up a model for you. That's what makes you not all these clothes you are putting. Oh, the And you not get anything. The grace to be wise this year. Receive in the name of Jesus. Amen. Tell your neighbor, occupy for Jesus. You must understand where God wants you. I want to give you this advice. My time is up. Oh my God. Can you give me 10 minutes? So, 10 minutes. HOP, may the Lord bless you. You know I love you, but I'm going to fight you after this meeting. This is 1104, this is 1103. So, I will look at this side. All right. Can I advise you? Examine yourself. Two, do a checklist. Extray your life. Three, be hard and honest on yourself. Four, write down areas you are not doing well. Five, profile solutions and timelines. What is that lot in your life? Genesis 13, 11. Until your lot separates from Abraham, your Abraham will not get to the promised land. This coming year. Bad habits, inadequate self-development, bad company, 1 Corinthians 15, 33. If your family life is poor, 
is a lot in your life. Your lot must be cut off. Go for counseling. Go for deliverance. Don't miss your problems with pride. Remove the cobwebs of darkness before you enter the new year. Come for deliverance. I want to make it open and I'm encouraging you and I'm making it compulsory for many people. The remaining three weeks this year, come for deliverance in clam here for the cobwebs to be cleared off through prayers so that your eyes can open. Then you enter into the new year very gloriously. Isaiah 10, 27. It shall come to pass this day that this body shall be taken off your shoulder, the yokes from your neck, the yokes broken, and the body removed shall be destroyed by the anointing. Isaiah 52, verse 2. Isaiah 52, verse 2, write it down. Shake thyself from the dust. Shake off the dust. The dust. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Then, Luke chapter 4, 17, 18, 19. You cannot doubt deliverance. It's real. What I'm telling you now is deliverance. Yes or no? It's not when you fall down. Boo, bah, 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 mm. You can be a teacher when you are teaching. When the teaching goes forth and an unbeliever gives his life to Christ, that's deliverance. When someone wants to commit suicide and you are canceled, you cancel the person and the person, I won't kill myself. That's deliverance. Deliverance is beyond ha, ha, ho, ha, ho, ha. Am I talking? When I go to the field, I go to Okija, I go to Mama, I go to all these places, I say, I accept Jesus Christ today, they let this land be delivered. That's deliverance. So every one of us is involved in the ministry of deliverance. Luke chapter 4, 17 to 19. Quickly. And that was delivered unto him the book of a prophet Esaias. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted. To preach deliverance to the captives. The recovery of the sight to the blind. And to set at liberty. They that are bruised to preach the acceptable you of the Lord. Look at me. Camera focus on this. This is my diary as your pastor. The kind of microphone they put by the air. If I use it, the thing will fly off many times. <laughs> see, see how I, I see my life. Can you see? If you ask me 15 years ago, I will bring it out. Now, see the way I run myself every day. Cameraman, focus. Can you see? My tight, I write my tight here so that I will not offend God because I am training myself as a Christian, wanting to make heaven. I'm not qualified to ask you to give tight if I don't give. See the way I run my life every day. See my diary. Camera, we see that, that diary. Uh -huh. Make it like, go down. Huh? Can you see? See? Can you see? My marginal error will be low because I do this. You must be detailed. You can learn it. The oil is on me as your pastor, so it drops on you. Can you see? Every day. Can you see? If you have a diary for 2017, with 2017 and 28 planning, bring it for me after the service. I need it fast. Can you see it? Can you see it? Baba Can you see it? Can you see it? See, see, this is how I run my life. Start it, everybody. Copy what your pastor is doing. It will work for you. Go and plan. Go and plan. Can you see? Can you see? Can you see, Can you see today? Now, the prophecies God has shown me throughout this year. See. From January, Revelations. Can you see? Prophecies. Revelations. Through my quiet time. Can you see? This is how I run my life. You can start today. Something new will happen. Jesus is Lord. If you are in this service, you are not born again. You want to give your life to Christ. You want to say, Jesus, I want to come to you. I want to know you as my personal Lord and Savior. I want to surrender unto you. Come over. Let me pray with you. You want to say, come into my life. I want to be born again. Anybody like that? Come. 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 Be come. Jesus is calling you today. Today is your day of salvation. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is our the Clam Deliverance Hard Book. Beyond doing the deliverance, get copies and give your children, wherever they may be all over the world. If anything happens, let them open. And then they study the word and pray. Things will happen. If you are a Clam member, if you are connected with this author, you, you must get this book. You see, 
It's in Christianity that people don't obey their leaders. But in the kingdom of darkness and all like that, once you don't obey, the penalty is death. We are not coercing you. We are I'm admonishing you in the name of Jesus to do what is right. God has written through my hand 47 books. People all over the world are making use of these books and they are making progress. How about you? Why should you be inside the water and be thirsty? Cultivate by habit. Get this book and get this one. There are checklists you can make use here to examine yourself. May the Lord bless you. Oh, say, ah, oh, praise God. Say, my Father and my God, I come unto you as a sinner. Forgive me of all my sins. Wash me clean with the blood of Jesus. Today, I am, blood, I am born again in Jesus' name. As I have confessed Jesus, you will not go back. You are going to be a great evangelist. You will be known worldwide in Jesus' name. Right to you may hear this. If you want God to give you new things, clear the old things. Go and clear your wardrobe. You see that wedding garment, you, are, you have overgrown it. Give somebody who can make it to another thing. All these, some useless culture and tradition. Eh? Take them to welfare, motherless place, prison fellowship. He's strong in this ministry. Evangelist Chris is here. He goes, he has just come back from my jobs, Plato and all these prisons. Let's go and grieve the prisoners. If you want God to give you new things this coming year, what you have in your wardrobe, clear them. Not bad things. You will iron them, make them okay, bring them to welfare, take them to motherless, the prison fellowship. Clear your kitchen self. That fry pan you have been using in the days of Mary's lesson. And Napoleon Bonaparte. Change it, door. Some of you may need to clear your vehicles. You have over repaired that vehicle. Give someone in the church. Give someone. Le? You have used your money in the vehicle. Give someone. May God give you tear rubber. Thank you. Jump over. Shout hallelujah. Say I hear. What do you want God to do for you this week? Talk to God. Talk to God. Something wonderful. Don't ask for negative things. Though. According to the will of God, so shall it be in Jesus' name. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with every one of us. That's why I'm backing on this journey. This week, it shall be wonderful. Everyone who has listened to the message today, the grace to be able to obey God, receive in the name of Jesus. Now, I pray for everyone, I pray for myself and those who are watching online, that this week shall be a wonderful week for you. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. May I thank you once again for giving me 15 minutes. I love you with the love of God. Thank you. Everybody shout one hallelujah. You have just listened to this message from the senior pastor of Christ Living Spring Apostolic Ministry, Clown, Pastor Wale Oladiyo. To order a copy of our video and audio messages, please call 01-794-9712, 0807-658-1733 or visit Clam Bookshop at Plot 126 Clam Avenue on Mole Ikeja. You can also visit our website at www.clamgo.org or join Pastor Wale Oladinu for the live streaming of our services on www.clamgo.tv. For counseling and prayers, please call 0802 121 4355, 0803 826 6330. And 0805-564-2735. Join us for our Wednesday Revival Hour from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. every Wednesday and Sunday Glorious Service from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. As you come, you'll be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen in Jesus' name. Settled.